Good afternoon. My name is Wen Yi Zheng. This is my group member, Zhu Yan Lin, and I'm here to present our design project, the Electrospun Nanofibrous Face Mask Material. So as you may be aware, airborne particulate pollution is becoming a big problem in many parts of the world. And long-term exposure to airborne pollutants cause many systemic health problems. The Air Quality Index, or AQI, was developed by the US Environmental Protection Agency to quantize the severity of airborne particulate pollutants. AQI factors in contributions from PM2.5, which are particulate matters around 2.5 microns in diameter, and gaseous pollutions such as CO, ozone, SO2, and NO2. Exposure to smaller particulates, especially nanoparticles, are starting to hit the radar in toxicology as having much, much more severe health effects. As you can see from the table on the left, AQI levels above 100 is considered unhealthy for many cities around the world. As you can see on the right, clean air is but a rare occurrence. The chart on the right tabulates the AQI, the air quality index that a large city experiences on a daily basis over the period of a year. And as you can see, the amount of airborne pollutants present poses a huge risk for the civilians of these cities. So the problem of airborne pollutants is significant in many parts of the world, including cities in East Asia, South Asia, and North Africa. As you can see on an average day, many cities around the world experience much higher levels of airborne particulates than what meets the AQI standards. So what do you do if you find yourself in one of these cities? Current solutions are limited to the completely ineffective surgical masks, as you can see on the bottom right, and the top right, effective but bulky and uncomfortable industrial strength uh, industrial strength filtration masks. The problem with surgical filters is that they filter out only about half of the particulates and they're pretty much useless. And industrial filters, it's really difficult to breathe through. Can you imagine going outside and trying to jog in one of these bulky industrial strength filter masks? These things are designed for workers in industry and are not suitable for consumers on a daily use due to the difficulty breathing in through them. So we would like to design a filter mask that is effective at filtering out particulate pollutants. Current filtration standard is the N95, which defines filters that capture 95% of particles about um, 300 nanometers or greater. The target of the N95 standard is occupational health use and it's not for consumers. There is a limited amount of filtration data for particulates less than 300 nanometers. And moreover, nanoparticles pose a more significant health risk than larger particles. So the problem with the N95 masks is that they're harder to breathe through. This is because they are made with microfibers and the microfibers are made by melt extrusion and they're larger in diameter compared to the particulates that they're trying to filter out. As you can see from the left, at different fiber diameter sizes, the filtration mechanism is different, and I'll talk more about this later. But in general, larger diameter uh, fibers provide structural support, but they, there is an increase in pressure that's needed to drive air through them. So we propose a filtration media of nanofiber filtrant on top of a microfiber mesh support. We'll use commercially available microfiber for structural support, and the nanofibers will be deposited directly on top of the microfiber mesh. We'll fabricate the nanofibers via electrospinning. And electrospinning is a technique to fabricate nanofibers, and this has been widely used and studied. Briefly, a polymer is dissolved in a solvent and loaded into a syringe. A high voltage, about 20 kilovolts, is applied between the syringe and the collector. As the syringe pumps the polymer solution, the polymer solution acquires charges and, the, and flies towards the collector. As the solvent evaporates, the polymer elongates into nano, nanofiber sized diameters, which are collected at the rotary collector. We'll cover the rotary collector with a thin layer of nylon microfiber mesh and deposit the nanofibers on top. By varying the concentration of the polymer in the solvent, we can in turn vary the diameters of the nanofibers collected and the morphology of the nanofibers. We used polymer concentrations between 17 and, 19, uh, and 25, and these are the values that are reported in literature as being pretty good values for um, nylon 6.6. 6. 
So why did we decide to use nanofibers instead of microfibers? In short, because of a lower pressure drop across the filter and efficiency in filtering out smaller particles. As you can see from the diagram on the left, as air flows past a micron-sized fiber, which are much larger than the molecules of air, the molecules of air collide with the surface of the fiber and they collide long enough to transfer their momentum to the fiber. This results in zero velocity and no slip flow at the surface of the fiber, which translates to a pressure drop as you collect the particulates in the air. However, for nanofibers, as you see on the right, air molecules don't stick to the surface long enough to transfer the momentum, and there is slip flow at the surface of the, uh, of the fiber. So if you filter out um, particulates with nanofibers, there will be a smaller drop in pressure because there is a smaller transfer of momentum from the air molecules to the fiber. Another advantage is that nanofibers are more effective at, at intercepting smaller particles because the air streamlines past them much closer to the nanofibers than the microfibers. So looking through literature, we found reports that for the same filtration efficiency, the pressure drop across the microfibers is indeed greater than that of nanofibers, as you can see from the top two rows. This result holds for fibers of the fi same filtration efficiency. But nanofibers will only have a smaller drop if the nanofibers are not dense enough to act as a filter membrane with small holes because that prevents the air from passing through. For our filter material, we decided to use Nylon 6.6. Nylon 6.6 has the advantages of good mechanical properties. It's non-toxic. It is chemically inert to most everyday chemicals, and it's water insoluble. It's also a popular standard in air filtration, both for industrial use and consumer household applications. And it's an alternative for HEPA filters, which are made of glass fibers, which cannot be dissolved and electrospun. Nylon 6.6 can be easily dissolved in formic acid and electrospun. So our functional specifications are as follows. We would like to filter our 95%, we would, would like to achieve a 95% particulate filtration efficiency. And this depends on the fiber uniformity and the small variation in the fiber diameter. We would also like it to be more comfortable for the consumer, which would translate to a lower pressure drop across the filter compared to current existing filter media. And we would also like to, our filter to be durable and non-toxic and to also withstand water vapor present in breathing. So after we have fabricated our filters, we characterized it via SEM. As you can see from the image on the left, the bright band is the microfiber underneath the nanofiber filter. The smaller ones are the nanofibers. And if you, see, if you look on the right, the nanofibers just they exhibit good uniform morphology, um, uniform diameter. And visually, when we take a photo of it, it we exhibited good uniform coverage on the mesh. So the nanofiber diameters were determined, ter determined from the SEM images. We obtained uniform nanofiber diameters around 120 nanometers, and dispersity is measured, is estimated from the amount of solution pumped through the electrospinner. Visually, we obtained uniform coverage on the mesh substrate, as you can see from that photo. So we used the setup initially using um, Sorry. We determined the air filt uh, filtration efficiency at an external testing facility in Toronto. Um, this is the schematic of our initial filtration efficiency test. Uh, so we place our filter in the filter holder, and before the filter, we have a mass analyzer and a particle counter. So we counted um, the mass analyzers analyzed the incoming particles between 10 and 400 nanometers and divided it into 13 bins. And for each of the bins, we had particle counters that counted how many particles impacted the filter, like before and after the filter per minute. Um, the data was updated each minute for a total of at least 30 minutes per filter. So this is our actual setup. We used an ambient source. Um, the source is from a busy street in downtown Toronto, and the air from the street is pumped into the testing apparatus, 
and that is the particulate source. So we have the filter before the fil um, we have the part uh, sorry, we have the mass analyzer and the particle counter before and after the filter, and the histogram is the current um, the current particle count for each of the bins. They're not synced right now, so that's why it looks like there's more before uh, the, there's more after than before. So this is the results of our first um, air filtration test. From the top, those images, the first one the, and the last three are our samples. And the other one, the second image, that is the uh, positive control um, of a lab grade filter. So our initial results determined that um, our, the, efficiency of, the filtration efficiency of our samples ranged from 63 to 89%, and this result was largely affected by sample uniformity. So this is far below the 99.4% of the lab-grade filter. And as you can see, the 63%, there is very poor fiber uniformity. So um, if, you, if you look from, sorry, so the, the x-axis of this plot shows the time, and each of these bands is a different filter placed there. The uh, purple line is the amount of particulates before the filter, and the green line is the amount of particulates after the filter. Sorry, black line, yeah. So we, d we realized we needed to improve fiber uniformity, and we developed a another electrospinning setup. We made a smoother rotary collector, and our second prototype performed much better. So we used a negative control of just the blank mesh, the microfiber mesh, and determined, as you can see, there is pretty much no filtration happening. And then we used the 17% polymer solution. Um, we spun it for one hour, and we obtained pretty good results. We used two different sample filters and ran each of them for at least half an hour. And then we used the 20% uh, nylon 66 um, polymer solution. And we spun it for one hour and we used two different samples. We ran it in the filtration test for at least one hour each. So this, at the second test, we also tested whether uh, one hour was enough or whether we can shorten the electrospinning time to 30 minutes. So we tested, that should be a 17%, um, a 17% nylon 66 after electrospinning for 30 minutes. And we also tested against a positive control of um, an N95 state-of-the-art 3M filter um, from, cut from the filter mask. We tested two samples of that. So to summarize our filtration data, uh, we pulled each data from every minute since the data was collected every minute. Um, we determined the filtration efficiency per minute and for each of our samples. So the ones in the middle are our, um, are our samples. The one on the right is our positive control. The one on our left is our negative control of just the blank mesh. And the error bars denote um, the variance of the pulled sample results per minute for the entire duration of the, test, of the sample testing. And to our surprise, we determined that our samples, um, in particular the 17% nylon 66 electrospun spun for one hour, actually performed better than the 3M N95 standard. And this is a statistically significant result. Um, moreover, the 20% uh, nylon 66 after electrospinning spinning for one hour, that also performed on par with what we needed, which was um, filtration efficiency of 95%. So we achieved 97.9% .9 and 95.8% in our filters. And uh, this, the, the, this uh, orange bar, the 17% after electrospinning for half an hour, we determined that half an hour of electrospinning was not enough to obtain a thickness um, such that we would be able to filter out, like such that we would meet the 95% um, percent standard. So if you can look on the right, um, that is our microfiber substrate just by itself, and this middle is our um, filter after depositing the nanofibers, and as you can see, we obtained a very uniform coverage. Um, this is the 3M N95 face mask that was cut up, and this entire thick face mask was tested against our samples and performed worse compared to our samples. All right. 
So in conclusion, we have managed to successfully demonstrate that our sample performed better than the 3M N95 standard. However, we're not able to perform pressure drop data um, because the testing facility that we contracted out to, they weren't able to uh, meet the terms of their contract and um, perform the pressure drop experiments. But uh, we we intend to perform those experiments here within the chemical, um, within the chemi chemistry department. So in the future, we intend to optimize the material design further and look into possible industrial scale up, for example, um, using the nano spider, which is an industrial sized electro spinner. And uh, we intend to, perhaps in a collaboration with another group, design a way of implementing this filter um, to integrate it into a face mask design. And further developments may allow this material to be more suitable for industrial use, for example, against airborne nanoparticles. And that is the end of our presentation. Um, do you have any questions? Yes, so, um, so we found a lot of results in literature that support the conclusion that nanofibers um, do translate into a lower pressure drop. And there has been, like a lot of these parameters came from papers that have already been published um, because you know, like they were able to make this, but somehow no one thought to, um, to I guess, implement it into an actual industrial product. Yeah, so the, yeah, for f just for filtration applications. But I guess the difficulty for, fr for filtration is for a lot of industrial uses, they prefer the HEPA standard. And um, for something to be HEPA certified, it has to be resistant against all these chemicals and be made from this glass fiber. And gl electro spinning glass fiber is just not feasible. So um, if, it, like, if it's got to have that property of chemical inertness to like every solvent, then it can't be electrospun because you need to dissolve it in a solvent to electrospin it. So that's why for a lot of those kinds of applications, you won't be able to use these nanospun fibers. But I'm thinking for um, consumer use, as long as you know, like the, the consumer is not going to come into contact with um, you know, like organic solvents, there, there is less of a need to use HEPA grade filters and consumers care more about comfort anyway, so. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, f calculation for the, for the filtration. So um, when we contracted it out to the testing facility, um, the person who did the testing it actually like did all the test, uh, did all the calculations for us, and they generated the plot for us. So, yep. So um, they have we have two they have two ways of testing. Um, do you want to go back further? Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going near the beginning. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So we have um, the, the data that we reported is from the ambient source, and this is the pollution, the pollutants out on College Street in downtown Toronto. Um, they also have, go back one. Okay, so um, for the so they have, we did two tests with them. Our initial test comprised of um, so nanoparticles in aqueous solution, and we. Genera uh, we generated the particles by bubbling air through them, and then we dried the particles and then performed the test. But we found it was better to use the um, to use the ambient source out on the street because that's closer to the kinds of particles that we would like to we would like our filter to perform against. So this is mostly, um, for example, uh, stuff from like car exhaust, like the burnt um, uh, carbon-based particles from car exhaust. Uh, and bacteria, and then there is also um, like the SO2, NO, um, NO2, CO, and ozone. So generic city-based um, particles. Yes. I don't know. This is a photo that was provided to us um, by the testing facility. <laughs> I, I thought it was really cool too, like how they managed to highlight all the stuff that's relevant and block out everything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we have a question. Yeah. Um, so, what is the 
Okay. Thank you.